Uh, it, it's again on par with what I've seen on the front lines of, of battle, but it doesn't have to be the new norm. Uh, we need to go back and actively manage our force. It's not that it's not that difficult to look at what's causing the fires. You know, the temperatures are are higher, seasons longer, but the amount of dead and dying timber, the density of trees is unprecedented and when a fire starts you can't stop it the worst you, the best you can do is manage it but it is about active force management uh, we know how to do it but you know I've heard the argument about global warming I can tell you global warming it does not is not the cause of these fires of this scale uh, it is lack of management you talk to forest fires uh, fighters out there and I'll tell you the same thing the question is this mr. secretary and and that is we know that uh, environmentalists have insisted upon uh, raising the density of uh, those forests uh, and and refusing uh, to allow common sense uh, cutting programs uh, it, it, there's just no harvesting uh, anything remotely approaching uh, what we used to uh, uh, experience and permit in our force, what can you do about it, and how soon? Well, we can do something about it. One is is that I signed a secretarial order to aggressively, actively manage our force. That's prescribed burns in the shoulder season. Uh, that's active uh, removal of dead and dying trees. You start with the roads. You look at the trail systems. You look at the urban, rural interface area. Make sure there's public access. A lot of these fires can be put out if the firefighters can get to them. But we've shut roads down, uh, and those roads are overgrown. So in, in many cases, those spot fires, mm -hmm. you can't get in there. Uh, so you need to make sure that we have roads access. And this is using best science, best practices for the greatest good in the longer term. That's the, the American conservation ethic. Uh, it's in the, you talk to the firefighters out there; they'll tell you exactly the same thing. Yeah. And 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 drive around America's forests, and what you'll see is a lot of dead and dying timber. Sometimes the mortality rate is 90 percent in areas that have been hit by beetle kill. And uh, the environmentalists, uh, many of them, the radical environmentalist groups, are you having active discussions, and are they are they relenting in any way? Uh, in what has been a, 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 a just a wrong-headed approach to forest management. Well, you know, you, you look at this, these radical environmental groups. They would rather watch the entire forest burn down than harvest a single tree. And we have you know, this country imports timber. There's billions of board feet of timber lying on the forest floor, rotting. Right. You know, and you look at the t the housing prices. You know, a leading indicator of those housing prices are timber and and materials. Right. So it's better to recycle that 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 timber in there and clean up our forest and restore the health of the forest, planting diversity, are they, diversity are they, species. Are they persuaded? Uh, there are some. Okay. Uh, well, today good. I was in a conversation with Nature Conservancy. You Let know, me, uh, they understand I, I turn, forest management. I want to turn uh, very quickly to uh, Governor Jay Inslee again attacking you. Uh, saying that you would sell your grandchildren for the oil industry. I mean, you've had to fight this kind of uh, nonsense from the moment you took office. Uh, y your response to the uh, to the governor? Uh, sad and pathetic uh, that he would inject grandchildren into a conversation. Uh, you know, the great state of Washington. I played for the Ducks. I enjoyed playing for the Huskies. Uh, it is unbecoming of the great state of Washington. He should he should apologize. He, he should apologize not to me, but to this, the state of Washington for those right. type of comments. And I, I want to turn to the the uh, the, the this uh, fight uh, that's uh, uh, is uh, erupted over security clearances. Uh, Admiral McRaven uh, among those uh, unexpectedly, I think surprisingly. I'm you're curious to hear your reaction. Weighing in, wanting the president, uh, taking the president to task for lifting uh, the security clearances of an absolutely politicized director of a politicized intelligence agency, and that is the CIA under President Obama. Well, a security clearance is not a right, it's a privilege. And when you abuse that privilege, then the president has every authority, and he is absolutely right to revoke these security clearances. I know Adam McRaven. I've known him a long mm -hmm. time. I respect him. I like him personally. Uh, but this is about Brennan. 
and and Brennan lied. We know he lied, uh, and there's others in there. And, and again, and then lied having some a security more. clearance and lied some more. And having a security clearance uh, for what purpose? To attack the president, yeah. to to misinterpret, to misinform. Uh, again, to monetize is a privilege. To, to monetize, monetize his public service, perhaps. Of course. All right. Mr. Secretary, good to have you with us, uh, and thanks for all you do for the country. Appreciate it. Well, God bless. You know, it is better to, it's better to charge up a hill under fire than cower in a foxhole. And just remember, Lou, the fight for freedom never ends. As, uh, uh, as you say, sir, good to have you with us. And likewise. President Trump advocating today for companies to report earnings twice a year as opposed to every quarter. President Trump says the idea was first brought up during a conversation he had with top business leaders, believes it could boost a business and create new jobs. And the number of young Americans entering the workforce continues to soar under President Trump's leadership. The Labor Department reporting the 16 to 24 year olds in this country looking for work in July, just 9.2% unemployed. That is a 52-year low. Ladies and gentlemen, more than a half century low. Extraordinary. Tesla's CEO, Elon Musk, buckling under the pressure, it appears, struggling, he says, to maintain his composure. His words during an hour-long interview with the New York Times in which he complained about an excruciating year and the toll that it's taken on his health. Shares of the car maker closed down 9%. Up next, the latest in the trial of Paul Manafort. How members of the national left-wing media have tried to target the jurors. We'll take it all up after the break. Analyst, legal analyst Greg Jerry joins me next. Stay with us. <laughs> jurors in the Paul Manafort trial have gone home for the weekend, declining an opportunity to work over the weekend. Uh, one juror is saying that he has uh, something of an event. Uh, so a, a second day of deliberation ends, and one will begin, uh, phase two begins, I guess, Monday. Judge T.S. Ellis also citing threats that he has received during the course of the trial, using those threats, at least in part, to deny a request from CNN, NBC, the AP, the New York Times, Washington Post, and BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed, uh, to release the names and addresses of the 12-member jury and all four alternates. Joining me now, Greg Jarrett, Fox Legal Analyst, author of the number one, did I say that right? Number one, New York Times bestseller, The Russia Hoax, The Illicit Scheme to Clear Hillary Clinton and Frame Donald Trump. Look at that cover. It didn't even have my name on it. What's going hey, you on? Are you guys are trying to a, erase me? You are becoming such a marketeer. <laughs> I, th this crass commercial. I learned it from you. <laughs> I do like hawking books. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's great to see you. I, th this crass commercial. I learned it from you. <laughs> I do like hawking books. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's great to see you. Good Again, to see you. congratulations on Thank the you. continued success with the book. Uh, I'm, I'm just fascinated with this trial suddenly because it has been much ado about uh, what looks to be uh, a, 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 an event that no one seems to understand which way it's going to go. Have we had any clues over the last couple of days? We have. The jurors sent out four questions to be answered by the judge. Uh, three of them dealt with, you know, tax and banking. Oh, well, wait a minute. Let's get to those. I, I want the tax. <laughs> I want the... No. The, but the one question that was really important was, what is the definition of reasonable doubt? And that is the dream of defense attorneys when they hear a question like that, because these lawyers mounted a reasonable doubt defense. Now, the answer to the question, the no, judge... Wait, wait a minute. Most defense attorneys do that, don't they? I mean, isn't, isn't it... They no, not necessarily. Some of them uh, actually take more of an active role. They call uh, defense witnesses and so forth. Here, they focused entirely on cross-examination and reasonable doubt. All right. All right, so the jurors are struggling with that. The judge can't answer the question because there is no legal standard for reasonable doubt. It is up to the discretion and the determination only of the Each jury. Each juror invents what reasonable doubt means in his or her mind? Defense attorneys try to help them along, and they routinely say oh, wait, wait, it is are not... You, is that what you're saying? That the, that yes, the judge invited course. them just to use their imagination? Use your own judgment, and wow. that's what... You, uh, judges routinely tell the jury. It's up to them. It's not up to the judge. You can't quantify as is 99% proof 
Uh, you know, so defense lawyers do say, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it's not maybe guilt, it's not probably guilt, it's not likely guilt. It is it's reasonable doubt. Re you, you have to, if you have doubt that is based on a reasonable amount of suspicion or evidence I, in I the case. I've never thought about it that way because, yes. I mean, that really does make the prosecution's job, I, I think, extraordinary. It's an extremely high standard, and it's the job of the defense attorney to create reasonable doubt. And here they tried to do it through cross-examination. So we'll wait and see. Uh, but as you and I talked before, you know, if you're to the defense, you want unanimous jury decision to acquit, but if you can get one juror who refuses to convict you, hang the jury. Well, hang the jury, and a juror saying to the judge, uh, I don't know that I've ever heard of this. I, I haven't made a career out of it, as you have, but the, the idea that uh, a juror can say to the judge, you know, I've got an event we don't want to deliberate over the weekend. Nobody's apparently, uh, I'm sure the judge knows what the event is, but the judge just being very relaxed about it all for a guy who was buttoned down, fiery, and uh, uh, had something to say about everything. Yeah, the, what the rocket yeah, docket? The rocket the, docket. Here's the weekend. Well, you don't want to put undue pressure on a jury unless you have to, unless they are uh, unable Reasonable to reach. pressure. Yeah. So, you know, the judge is trying to accommodate these jurors. They have lives, you know, and yes, this is an important case. The but, legal uh, system often forgets that jurors have lives. I mean, people talk about six-month-long trials. I right. Mean, what kind of mindless nonsense is well, you that? Want them to be, you want them to be rested and to make Fresh. reasonable judicious decisions, right? right? So, so uh, judicious decisions. I think you would have to say guilty or innocent. You wouldn't want some guy to vote to convict when he he, he doesn't want to, no, simply because he wants to go Especially to an event on sitting, a Friday uh, night. You know, now, would you? So, uh, No, I wouldn't. I, I, But I don't also understand uh, where we are here. Uh, how do you read it? Is Manafort looking a lot better with each passing day? That seems to be the cliche in, in uh, legal uh, circles that, you know, the longer it goes, the better it is for the defense. Yes. Is that true? Well, here? I always felt that way as a defense attorney, that the longer the jury was out, the better shot I had right. at it. If they come back pretty quickly, uh, it was oftentimes not good news. And uh, you believe that who will prevail? Well, we talked before, and we've got new evidence now. <laughs> new evidence. There is no new evidence. Now, look, um, it's a tough case for the defense to win. Uh, they might win on a few of the counts. If I were a betting man, I'd bet that the feds will get a few convictions, but not all 18. That's my guess. I'm not going to ask you which ones. <laughs> Greg, have a great weekend. Thanks for being here. Good to see you, Lou. Appreciate it. Up next. Former members of our corrupt intelligence agencies coming out of the woodwork to attack President Trump, who pulled John Brennan's security clearance. wonder why that is upsetting so many of them. I'll take that up in my commentary. Here next, stay with us. A few thoughts now on D.C. and the affairs of uh, men and women in the nation's capital. John Brennan. The CIA chief from 2013 to the end of the Obama presidency has lost his security clearance. And the swamp hates that. President Trump took away Brennan's clearance because of Brennan's, quote, erratic conduct and behavior, end quote. Brennan has been publicly attacking Mr. Trump even while Brennan was still director of the CIA. Viciously so. And Brennan has broken with tradition and civility. He is the first former intelligence agency uh, head to pol absolutely politicize his public service, trying to monetize that service and inject himself into presidential politics and to recruit the heads of other intelligence agencies to attack the president as well. And possibly Brennan is guilty of far more. The president's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, says Brennan was the central figure in orchestrating the phony Russian witch hunt and should be put, quote, in front of a grand jury, end quote. Why did Brennan have a security clearance to begin with? Because that is how the swamp works. The usual excuse for retaining those security clearances after service to an administration and the government as political appointees is to provide continuity or to preserve their knowledge should they be needed by the succeeding administration. 
Now that's not entirely bull, but mostly so. Those clearances are actually coin of the swap, enabling those who serve the nation to monetize their membership in a large and powerful club, the Washington Establishment, or as it's better known, the swamp. More than 70 former top intelligence officials have now criticized the president's lifting of Brennan's security clearance and in a letter called the White House decision and remarks ill-considered. Now, where were all of those officials when Brennan was hurling insults at our president? That, too, was unprecedented and ill-considered in my judgment. And the sight of Brennan, James Clapper, and James Comey sitting like magpies on a fence attacking Mr. Trump should have drawn the notice of those same almost 70 former intel officials, but no. And where were they when Brennan lied and lied some more? when he denied the CIA had spied on the Senate Select Intelligence Committee. Where were they when the Senate abdicated its oversight of the agency and permitted President Obama to politicize not only the CIA, but the Justice Department and the FBI and the IRS and the list goes on. Brennan's CIA spying on the Senate Intelligence Committee, lying to the very committee that has oversight responsibilities of the CIA should concern and shock and anger every American. Shame on those 70 spy masters, and oh yes, your little letter. You do yourselves a disservice in ignoring Brennan's sordid history, and you do the nation a disservice in not standing up for our president and the Constitution which he serves and which requires congressional oversight of the very agency that those officials have led. The president is the true patriot in all of this, and I hope he will end the wrong-headed convention of permitting wholesale retention of security clearances by political appointees. Please, Mr. President, lift those clearances, and this swamp will be draining a lot, lot faster. Our quote of the day comes from President Trump on September 7th of 2016. He said, we will discard the failed policies and division of the past and embrace true American change to rebuild our economy, rebuild our inner cities, and rebuild our country. Wise words. Up next, how wayward rhinos have given power in the Senate to the radical Dems. This is incredible. We'll take that up and much more with political savant and good friend Ed Rollins. Right after the break, stay with us. Senate Dems finally get their majority, courtesy of nine Republicans who skip votes Wednesday and yesterday. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell scolding these no-shows, and there they are. Our wall of shame, right there. They include lame duck rhino Jeff Flake, uh, Senators Tom Tillis and Mike Lee, both of whom, by the way, Lee and Tillis, urged the Majority Leader to keep the Senate in session during August. And then they don't even show up for the day that was required. Joining us now, Ed Rollins, chairman of the Great America PAC, Hall of Fame political consultant. Rollins served as White House political director under President Ronald Reagan and uh, serving us Thank you. and our audience nice, tonight. Nice to be with you. I, again, uh, the majority leader does not account his votes. Uh, he thought he had all of his players in line to stay here in August and do all his meaningful things. And obviously by this story shows that he doesn't have them all in play. Uh, and he better figure it out because you got two more weeks to go. And if they're out running on, normally in August, they're out going back home and running around doing things. What is the excuse for a Mike Lee and Tom Tillis who, by the way, are about as conservative uh, yeah. as most liberals. I, I mean, they are absolutely misrepresenting themselves. How could they do that? Call for the, the, the majority leader to keep the Senate in session and then do this. Well, it, it's it's one, one more outrageous thing that they do, and it's why the co country holds them all in a disdain. Uh, and the interesting thing of the three, the three leaders, uh, uh, Pelosi, 
uh, Ryan, who, who obviously not one of our favorite, and McConnell. McConnell has the worst numbers. Neither is Pelosi, by the way. Yeah, she's probably. Not. <laughs> I hold her about the same regard. <laughs> but interesting, interesting. McConnell, uh, who's probably got more done than you have, but is, is, is he uh, has got? I mean, a record held, number is held is in, the, in the uh, in, in the lowest esteem according to polls. It doesn't mean much. But I've got to say to you, uh, Mitch McConnell, who I have been very critical of for not supporting the president, has shown the uh, the intellectual capacity and and the character to support the president now on tariffs, support his uh, views on uh, balanced trade with China, uh, and he has moved through a record number of judicial appointments. I mean, uh, these are not inconsiderable I, I, to I, to I totally, I totally agree. You know, at, at the end of the day, the Senate is a, is a hard place to function and run uh, uh, as the leader, uh, but he's done as good a job as you can do. Uh, we need about five more senators after this game, and I think that's uh, that's got to be our goal in the selection minimum. Uh, Paul Manafort, the trial, it looks, uh, this thing is, it was so much attention drawn up, now it goes to the jury and almost everyone is now basically forgetting about it, it seems, including the jurors. Well, the interesting thing is the, is the judge on several occasions has said to the, make sure you don't go home and talk about this, don't read about it. <laughs> the problem is in Alexander, which is right in the heart of a Washington, D.C., this is all anybody's talking about. And so uh, my, my sense, whatever the social event this juror is going to tonight, uh, everyone's going to want to know they're going to know he's on the jury. They're going to know what he's going to say or, or she say, whichever the case may be. Uh, well, what I, I, think, this I think the good the good news for Manafort uh, and, and is that it didn't didn't happen quick. I mean, there was a lot of evidence thrown there. I think uh, I think the good news too is <laughs> when when the jury sends out a note that says, "What does reasonable doubt? Please well, define reasonable doubt." You know, that isn't the same thing I, as I, saying I, define I, no, I, guilty as hell. I've done I've done a lot of strategies for a lot of a lot of trials, and and the reality is that uh, they, they you know if if you get down to one or two juries uh, holding out, they really beat you up the last couple of days. So I think there's a I think there's a ways to go here yet. But at least Paul gets one more weekend of freedom. Very quickly, the clearances tonight. I said, let's please, Mr. President, get rid of those clearances, uh, wholesale clearances Absolutely. for uh, I, I, outgoing administration. I'd say anybody that signed that letter against the president, I'd take I'd take their clearance away. Just yeah, take I, I mean, they that is no right, just, they have no right to it. Uh, that is just ignorance of a, on a scale that it's hard to imagine. Well, they, they all forget that there's a commander in chief, and the commander in chief basically. They forget wanted, it. Well, they forget. They don't it. read the Constitution. Well, they, they don't they, they remember their sixth grade. They forget class. it all the time. That's that's the whole drill. That's here. a little and, frightening. And the reality is, the president uh, appointed one uh, a president appointed all those people, and they ought to give the same respect to this president. Oh, uh, this president has been so patient. I, I got to. I, I think he should be commended. Uh, for the patience he has shown. I mean, he permits some of the most aggravating uh, arguments within his administration and criticism from all quarters uh, that it just infuriates, I, I think, most Americans. Well, it doesn't doesn't help the presidency to have someone like uh, Brennan out there. Uh, I mean, I don't think it matters. Well, that was the whole idea. Right. And Brennan, I, I, and Brennan talking about McCarthyism. This isn't McCarthyism. He doesn't know his history. Yeah. Uh, this, he, this he, doesn't, is, he, he may not like this president. He may have been a political hack when he was in the White House. Also a liar end, and, and, and a, a deceitful uh, one as well. So, good. Have good nice to see weekend. you. Nice have weekend. a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, President Trump going after New York Governor Cuomo today on Twitter. He wrote, when a politician admits that, quote, we're not going to make America great again, end quote, there doesn't seem to be much reason to ever vote for him. This could be a career-threatening statement by Andrew Cuomo, with many wanting him to resign. He will get higher ratings than his brother Chris. <laughs> oh, the president followed that up with this tweet, which is worse. High-tax Andrew Cuomo's statement, we're not going to make America great again, it was never that great, or Hillary's deplorable statement, so that's a great question, and it is the question for our poll tonight. Thank you, Mr. President. Which is worse, Cuomo's never that great comments or Hillary Clinton's deplorables? Cast your vote. We want to hear from you on this important question. Radical Antifa thugs becoming increasingly violent and belligerent in their attacks on Trump supporters. Candace Owens of Turning Point USA has experienced it all firsthand. She joins me next. Stay with us. We're coming right back. Turning Point USA's Candace Owens takes a lot of heat from the radical Dems, the national left-wing media, 
for being African-American who just happens to support President Trump. But recently on MSNBC, Owens rendered leftist professor Michael Eric Dyson, well, almost speechless with a healthy dose of intelligence and passion. Antifa attacked me. This is an all-white gang that attacked me and attacked an all-black police force in Philadelphia, okay? And they claim to be fighting racism. How is it plausible, Professor, that you allow this to happen to your community because you've decided that because we are ideologically conservatives, you are okay with this. You're okay with the resources of, of the Democrats. First of all, I haven't said a word. I, don't, don't cut me off. I haven't you said did. a word. You just said a lot of words. A I didn't say of, a word. Actually, we, uh, no, no, no. Was counting, I, I said nothing about count, you. Now you're cutting me off. I said nothing okay? about you. No, no, no. no, no. I, so I, I find what happened to you reprehensible, by the way. I still have to keep it going. Candace, Candace, we're going to take a pause. No, no, no. I didn't get to finish. You just went on for five minutes straight. You are attacking your argument. You finish, but if you're calling him a professor, I have to give him time. So, Candace, way to go, Candace. Was that not spectacular? Candace Owens, communications director for Turning Point USA, our guest tonight. I've got to tell you, uh, you were absolutely magnificent. And those two fellas don't know what hit them yet, I am sure. They were trying, they they were ganging up there. Absolutely. And you just tore them up. I love it. Yeah, I wasn't going to allow them to render me speechless. So he had let Michael go on for about a minute and 50 seconds. And then I spoke for 20 seconds and he was going to cut me off. And that was the point. And I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to finish my points here because it was literally the day after we had gotten attacked by Antifa. Because it was literally the day after we had gotten attacked by Antifa. And yet the professor was saying that Donald Trump's supporters are racist. It, it, they have that. They have that mantra. I, I don't know why they even pretend to be in the news business because it is pure propaganda. It Absolutely. is baseless. It is vicious, uh, and it is apparently mandated by their corporate masters. Otherwise, it wouldn't be permitted. Uh, the, the president has. Um, I, I was saying earlier, Candace. I think immense patience to put up with this under assault every day from every quarter, including his own party of which unfortunately includes a lot of rhinos. I absolutely love President Trump. I I cannot say it enough. He is just, he's such a strong leader. He's fierce, he's strong, and he takes these attacks every day in stride, and he still goes out there and he does the job, and he's making America better. And let me just say this. If President Trump is racist, he's doing a very bad job at it, okay? Because we are seeing numbers and opportunities for black Americans that we haven't seen in decades. I just wonder if MSNBC has reported historically low levels of unemployment uh, among African Americans, among Hispanics. Uh, Women, uh, I I believe the number is something like 18 years uh, low. We are looking at youth unemployment. It's been more than a half century since that unemployment rate was this low. And this president has every piece of evidence to show that he is doing everything he promised and the campaign of 2016. That's exactly right. And he's also confronting the illegal immigration crisis and talking about that finally, which negatively impacts the black community directly. Low-wage workers, young black men are impacted the most when these illegal immigrants come in and, and do the jobs for lower, you know, lower wages. And I'm so happy that we're starting this conversation and that black conservatives are finding the strength and the fortitude to go forward and, and to speak up against people like that professor. And the great thing is that the, the president said he is going to receive restore this nation to prosperity and he's going to restore prosperity for all Americans and he underlined that and he is delivering on it and the left has no answer to it and I and I watch some of these savants uh, on some of those other channels on occasion and, and I wonder where are they getting their facts what would they like this president to do that he's not doing he is actually achieving he's not a rhetorician. He is not trying to impress uh, with a bloviation, uh, as some presidents have. Correct. He is just getting it done for America. And he's telling the truth finally. He's not pandering. They can't stand yeah, that. Yeah, he's not they pandering. Can't stand he's that not truth doing thing. what Hillary Clinton did and said she had hot sauce in her bag or throwing Jay Z and Beyonce <laughs> concerts. Okay, he's telling the truth and saying, "Hey, black community, what do you have to lose? They have destroyed yeah. your communities with the welfare system. They have broken down." the black family what do you have to lose the answer for everybody watching at home is absolutely nothing thank you president trump for all you are doing for black america and i i think we have to say as well if i may add this thank you 
President Trump, for all you're doing for America and all Americans. That's correct. And that is a great way for us to wrap this up. I just want to say again, great job over there on that other channel. <laughs> you, do you think they'll invite you back? They have invited me back. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, that is. <laughs> How many people are they going to put up against you this time? I don't know, but I, I'm not going to they, be silenced, that's well, for sure. I, I know this. It, it, the, the best they could do uh, is, well, lose gracefully. Candace, <laughs> great to have you here. Candace Thanks Holmes. for having me. Thank you. Up next, ESPN caving into the forces of political correctness or left-wing madness. I'll take it up with Pastor Robert Jeffress here next. Stay with us. We're coming right back. ESPN revealing today it will not broadcast the national anthem during Monday night football. Network President Jimmy Pataro said, quote, our plan going into this year is to not broadcast the anthem. That could change. It's unpredictable uh, what could happen in, in, the, uh, in the world. But as of now, we're not. I think that's about as hedged as he needed to make it. Uh, I, I don't know what that's going to uh, uh, create, but surely something. Joining us tonight is Robert Jeffress, pastor of the First Baptist Church of Dallas, Fox Business contributor, and pastor, great to have you with us. Let's start with your thoughts on the announcement that ESPN will not broadcast the anthem. Lou, I understand players have the right not to stand during the anthem, but viewers also have the right not to support cable networks that facilitate this disgusting and disrespectful treatment of our nation through its national anthem. And team owners also have a right not to keep employed these players who are hurting the bottom line. Now, I was thinking about this, Lou. You, you know, the Bible says there is a time for every activity under heaven. There is a time to protest, but it's not during the national anthem. That is a time for us to express our gratitude for living in a country like this where we can worship and speak and, yes, protest without government recrimination. Yeah, I, I just I don't know how this is going to, to play, because I think there's some people who will be thrilled that we're not watching the spectacle. Uh, of uh, players uh, kneeling during and insulting the, the, the flag, the, the national anthem, the nation itself. Uh, and others are going to be furious that, uh, that what is uh, an element of the, uh, of the event, the game, the national anthem, which starts every football game in the country, irrespective of professional or high school, whatever it might be, uh, you know, it's it's going to have quite a it's going to have quite an impact, and I I don't know which way it'll cut. I don't either, but I tell you, I am glad the president is continuing to call out this disgraceful behavior mm -hmm. by these players. And you know, Lou, if they are really interested in police uh, inequality and brutality, why don't they give a big chunk of their mega million dollar salaries to support the ACLU or distribute their wealth among the poor to level the playing field that they seem so concerned about? It's gross hypocrisy. Yeah, it is. And, uh, and I think it, in some ways, one of the ways it might cut is make uh, make it uh, imperative that each network carry the national anthem uh, to see what is happening and to, of course, uh, in this politically charged environment, uh, to assure that, the, uh, that there is proper respect uh, for the national anthem. Yes. So I, w we'll see. Uh, the, the pastor in Turkey, uh, a Tur uh, Turkish official saying U.S. sanctions are an effort at a, uh, a coup through uh, economics. Uh, what, what is going to be the outcome here? What is your latest information on the, uh, on the state and the fate of the pastor? Yeah. I, I think he will ultimately be freed because of the increasing pressure that the president and the administration are putting on Turkey. And look, this is an illustration, Lou, of the president's commitment to religious liberty. But it's also an illustration of his commitment to protect America. He believes that to attack one American is to attack all Americans. Mm -hmm. And you know, it seemed like for decades we walked around as a country with a kick me sign on us, inviting company, countries to attack us without recrimination. Well, those days are over. I guarantee you that under President Trump, there will not be any embarrassing Iran hostage situations that humiliated our nation for a year. The president believes in an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And while that's a lousy way to run your personal relationships, it's a pretty effective way to run a country. 
And I, I think the president deserves great credit uh, because one American treated this way is, is an insult and uh, on the United States uh, as a nation, and I think any American, uh, he or she abroad, should expect their country to stand with them, uh, as this president obviously is doing for Pastor Andrew Brunson. Uh, it's, uh, I, I think it's, again, uh, this president moving us in a direction that, uh, that is appropriately American. Uh, the, the Kavanaugh confirmation, uh, we're going to see that begin the 4th of September. Uh, are you confident that we're going to see this uh, move forward in a positive fashion or, or what? Well, it's going to, he's going to be confirmed and probably by a wider margin than many people expect. But, you know, Lou, a side benefit beyond getting a second Supreme Court justice for the president is I believe that these hearings are going to be a giant reminder to the American people why they don't want the Democrats in charge of anything. You're going to see the Democrats try to abort Kavanaugh. They're going to make fools of themselves doing so. And I think it's actually going to energize people to turn out for the midterms as well as serve is a giant advertisement for President Trump's 2020 re-election campaign. Pastor so Robert I think Jeffers. it's going to be successful. Thanks so much. We appreciate it, Pastor. Good to see you. Robert Jeffers. Thanks. Well, this is where we are today and uh, what we're looking at for next week. Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke tonight under attack by environmentalists as he takes an aggressive approach in fighting those massive historic wildfires in California. The Secretary with us tonight to talk about the fight. These radical environmental groups, they would rather watch the entire forest burn down than harvest a single tree. And we have, you know, this country imports timber. There's billions of board feet of timber lying on the forest floor, rotting. Secretary Zenke also weighing in on the former disgraced CIA uh, director, John Brennan, security clearance being revoked. Zenke saying security clearance clearances are not a right they're a privilege and when you abuse the privilege the president has every authority to revoke it the judge in the paul manafort trial today says he's been threatened the jurors have been threatened over the case judge t.s ellis today rejecting a media motion to release the names of the jurors revealing he's been threatened in the case the jury completed a second day of deliberations no verdict they go back to work again monday morning and i guess so do the most of the rest of us. That's it for us tonight. Thanks for being with us. Uh, we'll be talking with Representatives Claudia Tenney and Andy Biggs. We thank you for joining us, and I hope you have a splendid, terrific weekend. Good night from New York.